Good morning. Here is today's word of blessings for you. Revelation 21 10 to 12, 16 to 18, and 21 to 23. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high, and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God, and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great, high wall with twelve gates, and with twelve angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. The city was laid out like a square, as long as it was wide. He measured the city with the rod and found it to be twelve thousand stadia in length, and as wide and high as it is long. The angel measured the wall using human measurement, and it was 144 cubits thick. The wall was made of jasper, and the city of pure gold, as pure as glass. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. The great street of the city was of gold, as pure as transparent glass. I did not see a temple in the city, because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. Today's title is The Glory of Heaven. Have you read the description of heaven here before? What was your impression? I have read this part countless times before. But I found myself keep shouting wow! At the glorious picture of heaven as I read it today. It is just wonderfully glorious. But is it real? You might ask. What do you think? I can understand if anyone questions the reality of such glorious heaven. It is just too glorious to be true for earthly human eyes. It is unbelievably gorgeous. Who would believe it without any hesitation? It simply is beyond any human imagination. But we have seen that many of God's work even on earth was beyond our imagination. Of course, the scene of the holy city is different from any such revelation of the glory of God in scope and scale. But again, the difference is only a matter of degree not in quality. We have seen the body of Christ that was nothing spectacular normally being transformed as gloriously as anyone has ever seen before at the Mount of Transfiguration. That was so unreal too. If the glory of the Lord at the Mount of Transfiguration is true and real, why should this be untrue and unreal? I believe this is true. The more I reflect upon this scene, the deeper becomes my conviction. The whole description of the holy city, to me, is too detailed to pass it as momentary vision. It shows the detailed plan of the city viewed from inside out and near and far. It gives us a three-dimensional measurement of the city and its structure. The holy city is theologically consistent with the rest of the Bible. I have seen many floor maps of a room when I rented an apartment. The floor maps is just a one-dimensional combination of lines at first sight. But once you get into the house, the lifeless lines all become real. I am sure the description of the holy city laid out here contains much greater details than that. Still, when we finally reach the eternal home, we will utter countless wows I am sure. Oh, how wonderful it would feel to walk on the street of pure gold where the Lamb is its lamp and the glory of God gives its light. Oh when the saints, go marching in, oh when the saints, go marching in, oh how I want to be in that number, when the saints go marching in. Won't you join us in the heavenly march? Come, join us now. Amen.